Let's see. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Okay. Wow, this is exciting. I love talking to you. There's more kids coming into the field every day. This is amazing. Well, I was going to read a couple of things from uh, that I heard about a nine-year-old recently that I thought your listeners might find interesting because okay. he talks about being a time traveler. So I thought oh. I might. Yes. Yes, we'll do that. Yeah, anything you want to do is fine with me. I mean, this is all you. All right, I'm going to play the intro real quick so we can let people have time to come in. Be right back. Okay. So it's our fourth show of the day. We got the beautiful, beloved, brave Mary Rodwell uh, in the house on International Women's Day. How, how uh, that is in alignment? Uh, yeah. And so we haven't talked in two or three months. So I'm really anxious to see what she's got to say. Welcome back, Mary. Thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah, because I've noticed uh, everything is picking up, including um, the frequency of these children. And you said you had a couple of uh, things you wanted to read that you came across? Well, um, a few months ago, um, a lovely grandmother got in touch with me and told me about her grandson. And I, I got the permission just to share some of the things her grandson was saying, which I thought your listeners might find interesting because it's so classic in some ways, but also it's taking us into a whole new realm. For example, he talked about having this, he's now nine. We talked about having experience um, the other night saying he's visited by kids. They, he sometimes gets scared. Um, and I asked him what they looked like and he showed me how they surrounded, he talked about the, the black eyes, but he said they surround the bed and come out of a portal. He says they have black eyes and gray skin and he, they put him to sleep and take him. And they're part of the science team. Um, he used to have visits be, even before he was six. He was told he was special, even at five years old. He was shown things on screens, like the dinosaur times and future times. He spoke in depth about God. God is something he said he never meant to visit. And the older, bigger aliens told him God is not what most people think. And they showed him this vortex-type black hole that isn't a black hole, but is a violet light that creates. And the aliens don't even know who created it. He went on to say that he, um, he sometimes his, his whole body vibrates and his soul goes through his head and he could go anywhere in the universe. He then spoke in great detail about um, time travel. He said he's a time traveler from the form is not is not what he inhabits now. He is genderless in that form. Um, again, terms and concepts, the mother said, you know, he doesn't know. He says his alien form is really us from the future, and they are us and we are them. He told me that when he was seven, he said he had no nails and four fingers. He then talk, uh, talk about being visited each week with other children like him, taken on board craft, and he gets an in-depth education from these aliens. He calls the aliens the older, taller beings. 
Um, and one of the things he said is when they've been taking on board, sometimes gets nauseated. But he went in to explain the ultraviolet light as a creation spectrum and says the alien showed him this is what creates. Shown the past and the future. And Q is at least 400. And their lifespans are much longer. And they, uh, in, if they cut themselves, they heal automatically. He says other children he is with sometimes he doesn't know in everyday life. So they're just some of the highlights of this young, now nine-year-old, but he started remembering from five his experiences. Wow. wow, and I wonder how many of these kids are around the world. Exactly, exactly. Wow. And this is what is really so significant now is that we have to understand that why they struggle with the educational system here because a lot of it conflicts with their awareness and their knowing and the complex information they already have and they come here and they're told a lot of information that's inaccurate and we know that anyway anyone yeah. who's looked into the truth of what goes on realizes we're lied to about our history anthropology biology um the whole matrix of information is colored distorted so this is what they struggle with wow so we talked i remember we've talked several times since then but we talked last march because we had a really powerful month and uh you we had a really powerful week and you were one of the, the several divine feminines that came on and i remember that at that time which was at the early part of covid or the early part of you know quarantines or whatever and uh up to that point, you'd been you'd been having a couple of things that we were talking about. One was you were having these professionals, scientists, uh, physicists, and so on, coming together uh, to share their experiences, kind of wake up type frequencies, awaken type frequencies. And then, as the year went in, uh, went on, and these things happened, it seemed like those things were starting to become. I'm not going to say they were public, but they seemed to be picking up steam. And then the other thing was, of course, with the children which every time we talk, there's always more coming in. I know that it's been two or three months, but um, it's been a hell of a two or three months. I have to believe that your work, because uh, I, I, I look at some of the stuff uh, that you put out there, has, has got to be accelerating as well. I mean, has there been a, a, an uptick in either one of those two things that you're involved in? Absolutely. And one of the things that I know some people will still struggle with is this whole business of people becoming more and more multidimensionally aware, um, you know, getting downloads of information, getting insights, um, communication. And the difficulty for many of them is if they're more highly educated, they struggle with that a lot more because of higher education and their understanding of psychology, which doesn't disallows anything that's other than our physical senses. So when they start getting this, they start to get really concerned about their mental health. They start to wonder whether they're going crazy. And it is, this is the big issue now, is that as people are being activated and they're starting to see orbs, communicate with orbs, see light beings, see all these different intelligences, sometimes in their bedroom, sometimes that's happening where they are aware of being uh, these lights coming and taking them places as well. It's this whole, um, if you like, blanket of 3D reality and this also now, this like they're being in two realities and saying to me, the other reality is becoming more um more real to me in some ways than my 3d reality and i'm i'm in this awful place of confusion between what is real now and what's not real um and that's the the issue that many are, are in feeling the first thing is about grounding and i'm saying you know you're not meant to be in one more than another it's about marrying the two in harmony and in alignment so that you can still operate in your 3d reality but acknowledge the fact there's another part of you operating as we all know we do when we sleep at night we go out of body we astral travel we go to other dimensions other timelines parallel universe all of that is real as well yeah. um, and it's about people being informed enough and having that validation that it's okay you can handle it 
once you're not <laughs> afraid of it and you, you know because there are many are fearful of well i'll go crazy won't i if i get too involved in my multi-dimensional experience that i'm going to lose the plot and i'm saying no you just need to know how to balance that out and understand it and actually bring it into 3d and so a lot of my work has been showing them how to do that so that they can marry it into harmony and not be afraid of it and also realize that we are meant to be um, communicating multidimensionally ticket this is about right. us cooperating and being part of that communication knowing who is interacting with us getting them to identify themselves to explain their connection to you and why they're with you and also then validating the information as it comes in yeah yeah and, and uh and i think about like in my own experience it just feels like that um like you were saying that and i know a lot of people can uh, can attest to this or identify with it that it's it there it's very faint and subtle of course but you just wake up i wake up every day and there's these hints you know of of these experiences they're clear more clear than they've been uh, but they're still not like a verbatim recall i can't i can't tell you what it was but i can i can sense it in a way i never have been able to before so as you're talking about other people uh dealing with this and i know you work with a lot of people because i've run into them and we've talked about it uh, but I think about uh, it makes you think about mental what we call mental health and all of these people that I seems like to me most likely have been, uh, you know, been more conscious in these engagements that are not in the 3D. But like as more and more of this comes online, I wonder what that's going to do to the whole landscape of, you know, mental health, what's accepted, what's not accepted. So I'm just I don't know if you have a, a gut feeling or anything that you could offer in terms of uh you know like some of these people that have been uh that have the credentials let's say that society holds in a high esteem start to come forth and it's not just shirley mclean and you know, you know people that are once every now and then do you see that happening uh because it's picking up pretty pretty fast right now i do and one of the things that the new organization that evolved from free was you know the Contact and Consciousness Research Institute with Ray Hernandez, who's got a wonderful list of scientists from physicists to neuroscientists to um, all of those that are looking into consciousness. And this second book or, um, um, that, that is going to be out hopefully this year. Any of these scientists and uh, if you like, explorers into consciousness from those that, you know, have had a near death experiences and what have you are actually talking about their experience and explaining wow. what's going on. And then the scientists explaining how we live in the quantum universe to explain it. And I have to say, I'm coming out the closet a little bit with my own other experiences. Um, oh, really? There are many, oh, yeah. Um, it was challenging because I'm the one that's listening to everybody else's and I'm thinking, oh, Mary, you know, um, but it's time. It's time to speak the truth and our truth. And there's a medical doctor that's had near death experiences and talked about her multidimensional experiences. I have met a number of medical doctors that have had extraordinary experiences where, you know, um, which has enabled them to be a, a better healer and better doctor, for example. Um, and these are all coming out now in this book and sharing their stories. And I'm going to share a bit of my weird and wonderful experiences, particularly with the Crystal Skulls, which is one I never normally talk about. Um, uh, but it's sort of time because unless we start opening up and speaking our truth on the broadest scale possible now because of what's going on, unless you're not going to get the shift why we're still afraid. To, to be ourselves and to, to come from that place of, of truth within us, we're going to get the acceptance. And it has to be enough of us. So this book is really about looking at all of it from shamanic experiences, um, near death experiences, out of body experiences, as well as obviously encounters with the various non-human intelligences. And we know they're not just the physical, we're talking about interdimensionals, extra dimensionals, trans dimensionals, visitors from our future which is interesting when this little boy 
is talking yeah. about saying that he's a Tory example. We've got to understand we don't know about our realities. And it, the only way we're going to find out is if we now start to open up exploring what people are experiencing. Because I hear, you know, so many extraordinary things from my clients of what they're experiencing going into different timelines. You know, parallel universes describing a life there as now in another another timeline hmm. for example you know that they're aware of this conscious lucid dreaming the whole thing and it's it's everywhere it's just that everybody is so afraid of saying well the emperor's got no clothes guys well <laughs> you know that that's the deal come on and and to be yeah. honest for me it was a challenge to start saying well actually i've been aware of connecting to what i call my non-human team for when I was, um, and it happened very, um, very unexpected for me because I always thought I was so down to earth, ex nurse, you know, um, very 3D in my perception of myself. For me to have experiences then that proved to me categorically that every one of us is multi dimensional, no matter what yeah. our perception is of of how grounded in 3D we might. Uh-oh, she popped out. She'll pop back in. Man, she's mind-blowing, isn't she? She really is. Here, she'll be back, I hope. Unless, uh, you know, <laughs> let's just work with the energy. Let's not put any uh, any conscious thought into creating something that's not in alignment with us. Here she comes. That's her. Okay. You're back. You're, you're back. Back. Uh interesting isn't it yeah uh, i didn't want to let my imagination run through it i said let's just work with the energy yeah i'll go ahead continue so this book that's coming out with um, the new organization is credible people that um people will look on as you know at least having credibility that's not to say that people without phds and mm -hmm. all these these um credentials are you know the only ones that are credible it's just that that's what society gives credibility to. Exactly. So we have to honor that. And that's the deal, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to be a big step. And then I think about the, uh, um, okay, so there's a pretty strong narrative uh, with, let's go back to 1930 Germany. Uh, and I think it's called the real society. Uh, these few ladies that grew their hair long and they were, they were connecting to Aldebaran, and, and then they were told, "Here, we've got some technology. We give it to the to the, uh, the powers that be in Germany, and so on." With you know the technology that was introduced, and we can talk about that all day long. But my point is, you know, you were talking about how it's not a one way street. This is a two way street. There's meant to be, a, let's just say, a conversation. And, and there's so many people that come on the show. I mean, I'm married to one. I mean, they're all over the world. They're receiving information, different modalities, different processes, sacred wisdom, and books are channeled and all that stuff. And I just wonder, uh, it, it, it just doesn't seem logical that that type of communication going on on such a grand scale can be held back much longer. I just don't see, it's almost like the dam's just gonna burst wide open. I think you're absolutely right. And I think that the, the frequencies that are coming in are making it re almost impossible for people to deny what they're experiencing. The main thing that I found is the 3D educational or, or uh, religious block to mm -hmm. owning this because of either I'm crazy or it's demons or whatever. So the fear factor of, of that either, as I say, their psychological health or because their religious beliefs um, do not allow for this um, and they get a lot of negative um, understanding through their, their religious beliefs. But one of the things that is, is clear is the downloads that people are getting, the, the insights, the synchronicities. And I, I say to them, you know, uh, you're talking to your best friend behind a wooden door. Isn't it time you found out who you're interacting with? Um, and they go, well, yes, I said, because otherwise all that all it is is one way street. You can't question it. You can't ask them to validate it. You, you just get these insights, which may be very valuable, 
but you know sometimes you don't always understand isn't it time now for you to open that door and find out who this intelligence or intelligences are that are interacting with you then you can actually start questioning asking them to validate it stuff if information comes in that you don't fully understand or you want to get more insight you can say i need more information i said this is now getting your best friends sitting next to you and saying right so why are we connected what's our you know what's our um, soul connection you know what do you right. bring to me in my life you know what's our origins uh, all these kinds of questions so that you know more about your best friend who may yeah. not be in physical but they're energetically there their energetic signature is right next to you because people say well i feel the energies i said well who do you think they are i said they're family you know it's yeah. time for you now to get <clears throat> them to identify themselves so that clairvoyantly and clairaudiently you are connected because that's the next level of our ascension is to become part of the galactic community as a conscious co-participant of our, our reality rather than yeah. always feeling like we're just at the end of the long chain of, of, of um, the experience, which, you know, it's time for us to own that now and work with it consciously. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. There's a lot on that. There's a lot to uh, like, even we've been talking for the last couple of weeks, you know, on the show about how the room's filling up and, and there's more and more and more uh, star family or whatever you want to call it. That's here. I mean, it, 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 everything's pointing towards, like I said, like it feels like a dam's about to bust. Yeah. Uh, I saw, you mentioned it a while ago and I saw on one of your posts in the last couple of weeks and I, I don't recall exactly what it was. It might've been about that conference in Vegas that you're going to be speaking at and, uh, or maybe even the, the one that was online. But I think there was a sentence where you said what you said here earlier, that you were actually coming out with some of your own personal experiences. And I'm wondering in regard to those things and certainly talk about anything you want to, but I'm just wondering in, in your experiences uh, with your team, uh, you know, whether it be the crystal skulls or whatever, uh, is it the type of communication where you're getting uh, uh, directions or guidance with specificity, or is it more of a collective kind of a esoteric type of, uh, you know, situation or experience? Well, there's the team and there's what yeah. I call my, you know, my life guide or gatekeeper, um, depending on what people are comfortable with. Some people say well, that's all my higher self or my super conscious. I, I work with whatever understanding they feel comfortable with in terms of communicating with the non-physical realm. I have still got, as I say, my life guide, but I also, some of them come and go. So in other words, if I'm exploring something like what's going on on the planet now, uh, a new guide may come in, I will recognize an energetic signature and then I will get, um, they will often introduce themselves. And, I, and I'm, I'm one of these people that you have to prove to, yourself, to me who you are by the information, the integrity of the information and the high frequency of the information. Because I, I've always said that, you know, it's all about intent. When you put out, I want only the highest frequencies of spiritual understanding you are actually creating the frequency of what you draw back to yourself. So right. from doing that, then um, that's that's the mandate to my to whoever um, introduces themselves to me. And then I will have others. They may be some we would call angels or archangels or whatever or um, ascended masters, but also light beings, um, many different star systems um, that, that are being may come in and say. Uh, I need you to be aware of this. If I have someone come to me and um, what will happen is they will be telling me their story, but I will also be getting feedback via my communication with their team um, okay. as well as, you know, the conscious information. So it's sort of um, a very interesting under, uh, a sort of complex, but also very clear way of communicating. So I know exactly where to head with them because I'm, I'm shown now this is, these are the questions you need to ask. This is what to understand or whatever. So it facilitates a greater, um, if you like a, a clarity that you don't always get if you're just working from 3d. So if yeah. you can work from a that other, other level. So 
my team will also connect with somebody else's team with them right so that it's it's it, it works like that so that i i have a direct line to happen and you can you can talk to it in a way like you're talking to the super conscious because i'm addressing the super conscious to, uh, too and i'm saying whatever needs to happen here then we need that to be facilitated by that other you know higher part of yourself so it's honoring that that awareness as well so for me it's 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 sort of like um an interesting i i feel like it's it's like different frequencies that come together to give the package that they need and the one i need to facilitate whatever it is is going on with them yeah yeah that's a i, I love that description too and i know you work with a lot of people uh because it to me like the way you describe it it's actually like you know like an exercise in sovereignty an exercise in uh, expanding your power, you know, I mean, I, I mean, it would be like anything else. If you got a muscle, you got to use it if you want it to grow. So, you know, that would make total sense. I know uh, sometimes people will hit Morgan up, you know, to learn how to, uh, you know, contact and communicate with your higher self. And she says to him, you know, it's like a, your best friend, you know, it's like a friend. How do you get to know your friend better? Where you engage them in conversation and so on. And, and, and then I think about too, like with your history of working with people, one of the things that I see, and it's not as, as uh, prevalent as it used to be, but it's still there where people have, and rightfully so, you know, I mean, I can understand it. They have a fear about these things because they are non-physical. And so my question would be, I think something that a lot of people could gain from, because I see it in the comments and I see it in the field. And that is, uh, you know, you made the comment a second ago about what whatever's presenting itself, it's not a coincidence. I mean, like you've got something to do with it, whether you're conscious of it or not. How would you guide somebody who says, I've got this energy coming at me and it doesn't feel very good? Uh, it scares me. How would you uh, guide somebody to kind of work through that and either integrate with it or discern that it's not them or something? You know what I mean? The first thing that I would say to them is if you're still in fear, then you are going to bring in the lower energies because they can tap into fear. It's a frequency either, you know, entities that are not less benevolent will tap into because they they use your fear to increase it and to manipulate you. So that's the first level. You it's about knowing your sovereignty and knowing and I know some people are going to argue with this or perhaps have a problem, but let me put it like this. When I asked about negative energies or less loving energies and all the rest of it and people have entities coming and get really scared and what have you, I do not dismiss their fear. I do not dismiss the, the what's going on for them. But one of the things I was told for me was when I said, well, what do I do? You know, how do I know um, of coming from that high frequency? And if they're not, um, how do I know that they can't in some way affect me or control me? And one of the things I was told was this, Mary, do you, are you connected to the source? And of course my answer was, Yes, we're all connected to this. Then the question came, so is there anything greater than the source? And I said, well, no, nothing's greater than the source of whatever name you want to give that. So is anything greater than you? Mm. And it was, well, no, not unless you believe it to be so. Right. So if you have a fear of something, then you automatically disenfranchise yourself because right. you are allowing them power over you. So going back to that is when I ever get concerns or whatever, I go back to that because for me it works. That ultimately there's nothing that can come into my realities without my permission. And ultimately you're not okay, off you go. I mean, if I'm clearing the decks as I call it in my room, angelic realm and say, clear the decks please. Don't do anything else clear the decks because I trust the angelic realms frequency. I don't have, and I will tell you, I just don't get hassled. Um, so yeah. I don't, what I'm doing right 
um, or whatever, but that seems to work for me. So it really is about trusting who yeah. and what you actually are, which is in, we're all incredible in terms of how we would understand it. Of course we are. We're all avatars. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing too, like what you just described actually applies in the 3D external world. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's no difference in giving your power up to whatever, you know, I mean, if whether it's in the etheric or, you know, in the physical experience that we're having. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure there's got to be a correlation there. Like as we as humans uh, step into our power and our sovereignty and, you know, and take our power back, it's, I would think, and vice versa, it's got to reflect in our etheric uh, experience as well. Uh, somebody had come on here and I can't remember who it was just to, in today or yesterday or, and they, I believe I remember who it was. They were like channeling or downloading uh, in their own experience and they're just conveying it to us here on the show. And they remarked that through their uh, communications with their guides or whatever, that the level of people um, awakening, and I, and I figure there's probably no one better than you that would have uh, a better perspective because of how long you've been doing this, but that the level of people that have been awakening in 2020 was like more than had in the, pre I think he said the previous 10 years, he may have even said 10,000 years. I don't remember, but, but it just made me stop and go, wow, was it that big? Was 2020 that big? Do you see it yeah. that way? I do, even from a very pragmatic level of everybody being locked down in their own homes, taken away from the treadmill so mm. that they have time to think, have a time to work out what's really important in their lives. And it's, you know, this fear of our mortality gets people starting to reappraise what are they doing? Why are they living a certain way? Is it really serving them? I mean, the interesting thing with me living in Queensland I mean, some of some of your audience may know about Victoria and what's mm. happened there and the dreadful lockdowns that have been going on there. There's been a 21 percent rise in people wanting to relocate from wow. Victoria to Queensland and live in rural communities because we've had properties on this market in our little town for sometimes two or three years. There is no property that's flat land now that's for sale. In wow. fact, a lot of the, even the other properties are being sold. So there's this huge migration of people wanting to leave the cities and go and have a more rural lifestyle, self-sufficient lifestyle. That's, that is really significant in terms of how that's shifting people in terms of their motivation, where they want their future, and then seeing more of what you know the past the veil that um, right. you know you know the the mainstream narrative are putting out there and all these fear frequencies and whatever so i think it's been um very much a catalyst for a lot of people to reappear just on the very pragmatic 3d level right exactly let, yeah. let alone let alone the the multi-dimensional frequencies that are hitting the planet now yeah, you're seeing some of that here, too. Uh, it's been happening, but I mean, it has accelerated quite a bit. Um, you were in, in, in regard to uh, what you the comment you made uh, about you're starting to come out with your own personal stuff uh, in. Uh, is that something that's very frequent for you? I know you tap into it, like if you're doing a session or maybe in your daily routine. But are we talking about two different things here? You're talking about like you know, um, I say a more uh, like a divine episode or, you know, semi paranormal uh, episode. Are, are these are these unique instances or is this pretty much the way Mary lives every day now? <laughs> it's it's part of who I am. For mm. example, I believe that ultimately you're working with your 3D, which grounds you onto planet Earth but you're also should be working multidimensionally at the same time. So you access whatever you need, depending on the circumstances. So I could be on the phone um, and they'll just come in and give me something I need to say to that person that's relevant to them or whatever. I don't, I don't have to go into trance. I don't have to, because they're there all the time. So if something's needed or they want me to know, there'll be a synchronicity and, or, and they'll guide me to looking at the, 
the um, time and it will be 11 11 and I'm thinking oh so that's significant I've got to take notice of that or whatever so I'll get all uh, or I'll get them uh, uh, when I'm talking to somebody like the bus and it's this is important Mary take notice of it or whatever so it's not separate it's part of who I am and it's as natural to me as breathing now because once you fully accept that part of yourself it works in harmony with your 3d self but if I'm doing a session um, they'll come in hypnosis it's not quite um, the way that um, um, some will work because when I'm working with hypnosis I'm going there as well I'm going with them okay. and when I'm going okay. with them um, I'm being shown some of what they're seeing in hypnosis and then I may get they need to look around because to the right there's something significant so I will say to them I'd like you to look around now that might be significant because that's mm. them saying this is what this person needs to be. So it's, it, 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 is a, it is a joint consciousness exercise. It isn't me just saying, oh, well, I think now you, you know what's happening next. I'm often being shown along with them. And I always remember the first time it happened to me when there was a young man talking about being an ET and he said, and I'm, moving a big object he said from one dimension to another and he's and as he said it in my clairvoyance I was saying oh it's a planet he goes immediately afterwards he goes it's a planet and we've moved it too quickly and we've had to now sort out its energy and it shocked me wow. that I got it before he even mentioned it and then I realized what I was doing that I was going with them in my consciousness yeah. um, and that's the next step I believe with a lot of um, what we call the, you know, the trance states is that we can join. I've, I've even worked with a lady called Paulina Howfield and she was going interdimensionally in a hypnosis. And, and we only realized that I joined the tape was she'd listened to the tape and started to take on a completely different pitch as mm. she was going interdimensionally. In a, my voice stayed normal. The music stayed normal. Then my voice started to change into this high pitch with her, but the music still stayed normal. This is a, a tape deck. This is the old technology. Wow. Impossible. Totally. Right. Im so we realized together. Yeah. Wow. And so I think, uh, and I asked some of these questions because I know there's a lot of people that might watch this and, and get some uh, tidbits of information or code. Uh, but I think another thing that I see people kind of struggle with, uh, because it's not the same for everybody, or at least it just it doesn't appear to be the same because there's different clairs. But like in, in regard to the, the phone conversation you were describing or episodes like that, you know, it, it the, the information comes in and uh, it's so subtle for some people, I think. Uh, and I do agree with you in terms of like it's getting so loud that uh, that everyone's going to have to acknowledge it. Nobody's going to be left out. It just seems to be getting louder and bigger. But in terms of like when when you work with people, how do you, how does a person uh, develop a trust or a confidence in what they're experiencing, hearing, seeing, feeling? Good question. And it took me some years to fully embrace that this was had integrity, that it was useful, that I could question it and have it validated. And this is what is part of our, our job as the, the person working with the non-physical realm is creating the boundaries. What do you need to trust the information that's coming through? So I said, the first thing you do is question. So if they get something through when I'm doing a session and introducing them to the family, as it were, and they come out with something and, and I'll say to them, do you understand that? They may say, well, actually, no, I don't. Right. Now go back. And you say to them, please explain it to me in a way I can understand. And if okay. they come back again and say, well, they're saying this, do you want, does that resonate? Well, I'm not really sure. Right. Go back again. So in other words, I say to them this, just imagine they're sitting right next to you. Um, in physical form, and you don't understand something, you question. And then you yeah. say, now prove it to me. So for me, if I'm given information, um, I then say, right, now you've got to show me that it's valid. 
and I'm I'm going to make uh, I never normally talk about this, but it was one morning I woke up and um, I got this voice saying to me, and I hadn't heard. This is some years ago now, and I hadn't heard of who this was. And they said to me, this is Metatron. And I just laughed my head off and said, oh, come on. I said, do you sound like one of my grandson's Transformers? You know, because that <laughs> that was my first reaction, right? Um, you're going to have to really prove to me who, you, who and what you are. And then I got this dialogue about the Metatron's cube, about um, certain things happening, what, they re what this being represented and all the rest of it. And I said, you do realize that I'm going straight on Google, I said, and I'm going to find out if, if everything you've told me is true. And of course, it all got validated because I came mm. straight on the computer and there was all the information. And something I was told about something that was going to happen at, at a portal a few days later absolutely happened. I was told wow. about what, exactly what was going to happen. So to me, I'm, I'm hard. I'm a tough nut. Um, and I think you need to be. You need to be absolutely certain that when you're getting information, it's coming from the high source. Does it resonate? And often the resonance will tell you, you'll get the buzz or right. you'll get this just knowing that it's right. These, this is about us now trusting our hyper, uh, you know, our super conscious self and, and the information that we have within us, yeah. that knowing we have of who we are. This is about self empowerment from the most integral part of who we are this isn't just a fancy word here this is right. what is your truth not somebody else's truth right. they've got a different perception a different resonance and whatever they're not they're not you what's your truth and this is important for us to do now given the rubbish that we're being that's being put out there on multiple levels of you know of, of information and uh, you know what's accurate what's not accurate we have only got that at the end of the day we've only got ourselves to tell us the truth not and it isn't someone with a phd or it's not someone you know whatever they say they they are whatever kind of expert they say they are they are not you they are not your truth they are their right. truth and that doesn't necessarily mean it's yours yeah yeah, great answer, great answers. I'm loving this. So, and in terms of that dam that's filling up and going to bust one day, like it's one of the things that that more and more people are talking about is kind of a personal personal mission oriented guidance that they receive or understanding, um, and and sometimes, many times, they mention either in that context or, you know, in a conversation revolving around this type of uh, platform about their planet of origination or star system of origination. And, you know, with your experience and, and, and uh, I, I'm just saying like from your perspective and I'm not saying anything's right or wrong, but from your perspective, how important is it for someone to know or what's the value of knowing where you originated from, if that's even the proper term. I mean, the, where you're getting your channeling or your communion from, how important is that uh, or is it? It's important to some. Mm -hmm. For some, um, I mean, I was working with a lady only recently and she said, I'm not from any of these star systems. It's not relevant to me whatsoever. So, it, it, you know, that's often another dimension of a reality mm. that she, that person's come from. Sometimes it just helps them with this feeling of being different, knowing you know, you know that this isn't home um, and to feel a connection to one, and I'll say it's one of their origins because, you know, we've had many, many lifetimes, many different forms. We've, you know, we've been from other dimensions and, and whatever. So the, the truth is that that may just help them, um, if you like, ground to right. that frequency that's in this time. So whether they say they're from Arcturus or from Pleiades or whatever, that may be the most recent origin and it helps right. them to ground, to understand a little bit more of the qualities of that star system that fit with them. So, But we've got genetics of maybe 12 or more different species right. of, um, the, you know, galactic species anyway. And as our frequency rises, and activates more DNA, we will connect to more and more of those origins. And it may, as I say, it won't necessarily just be 
Pleiades or Orion or Arcturus or Andromeda or whatever will start to open up to the understanding of our connection to those as well. As well as um, I remember a 10 year old explaining to me that he was from another dimension and he came through a portal in the sun. So he knew he wasn't from this particular dimension. Wow, far out. And, uh, and I guess the other thing that I look at is, and it just baffles me, and I don't know if you can speak to this or not, but it's how in the hell can, can if it's happening to all of us, it's got to be happening to people in all walks of life, all institutions and organizations, such as the professionals that you that you've mentioned before. Uh, how long? How? For my question is, how do they keep a cap on it, and how long can they keep a cap on it? It just doesn't seem like you can contain that type of information, which nobody is immune to. In terms of the experiences, it seems like. There comes a point where they either have to own it or shut it down with the confusion because that's what they will get is they'll shut it down. They may decide to take medication, shut it down or, mm -hmm. you know, alcohol or whatever to shut it down. But they will always live then with and, and deal with often depression because depression often is a spiritual emergency. It's about the spirit of wanting to come out and be whole is the reason so many get depressed. So we either listen to that and we do something about it or we just shut it down and be depressed and, and live our life like that. And there are many that will be too afraid because of judgment, because of a religion or because of their, um, uh, you know, their educational system that is saying this is dangerous obviously you're schizophrenic, obviously you're this or that or the other. So that's the sole challenge. Uh, and that's the sole challenge for everyone on this planet right now is to wake up or, or decide that they're going to stay in 3D. And one of the things I remember Dr. Olson, the molecular biologist experiencer that um, I mentioned in The New Human said to me that she was aware we were separating out into two frequencies low frequency people and high frequency people mm. and the low frequency people will stay in 3d because they their soul has chosen it this time and yeah. the high frequency obviously have said i'm ready to wake up i'm ready to be who i really am now and i'm i'm not fearful of judgment i'm not fearful of all those things out there that that try to shut me down because that's exactly what's going on right now we yeah. are being muzzled the masks yeah. tell you everything, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I know that uh, over the years, you would have had to have seen many, many changes, like, you know, through your clientele, which was kind of a little window into the collective. Uh, and I know we joked about it a lot. We joke about it in these, these uh, platforms about the wake up experience. And, you know, and, but so many people, especially if I go back four or five, six years, you know, when there was a lot of empath support groups and such, um, they had this very similar uh, journey, which was they knew they weren't from here. And it was almost like they had like a, a galactic PTSD, you know. So I know a lot of practitioners, a lot of practitioners like yourself would have been helping them and help them to, you know, uh, transform or evolve from that standpoint. Uh, are you seeing uh, a turnaround with that type of thing? Are you seeing, uh, you know, with, with strong evidence, I guess I would say, um, people that are really taking on, uh, you know, that they are a transformer, that they are galactic? I mean, I guess another way to be uh, to put it would be, do you think that the galactic PTSD and those things associated with the wake-up experience will go mainstream anytime soon? I really feel strongly things are accelerating so much now. And what we discovered with the surveys, we, um, surveys of 4,200 people um, was that 85% after they'd been through some of the trauma and fear that they experienced initially to, with their experiences, as they worked through that process, they came to a point and 
what was fascinating with the statistics was 85% of those 4,200 people said they had a, a psycho-spiritual transformation. Wow. And only 15 stayed in trauma and were seeing it differently. So even though, you know, many of them that come to me initially are really scared, they're scared because they don't know if it's real. They're scared, uh, what, what does it mean? Why me? What are they doing to me? Or whatever. If you can give or help them through hypnosis to find out what actually happened, Happened. Often what they believe and what did happen can be two different things. For example, right. they can see themselves in a, 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 a craft, they see themselves on the table, they may, without understanding, they may think, oh, well, they're doing something terrible to me. If you get them to communicate with the being while they're there and say, why have you brought me here? They may very well get, um, this is a healing procedure. Um, and this is why we brought you. Um, and they will also get, we needed to do X, Y, and Z. And I'll say to them in that space, does that resonate with you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it, may, it actually makes sense. When we found out of those 4,200 people that 50% of them re recall that they had healing experiences on board craft, 50%. Yeah. So, you know, you get this data, the data is there. And this was the whole point of doing the survey was the misconceptions, because all we heard about was the fear and the trauma and these evil beings and what have you. And that was not, I mean, I wrote Awakening, how it transforms your life, because it does. Mm. Ultimately, when you wake up and you start to own your truth and your connection to, the, you know, these, these many different species of beings that are interacting with us on the, the most, mostly you're getting a benevolent response most yeah. that doesn't, you know, there are some that seem to have their own agenda. And we, we also know about my lab and the program life forms, yeah. which muddy the water, but on the whole, most people, I say 85% psycho spiritual transformation. Yeah. What does that tell you? Yeah. I have memories of going to the, to the ship, but it's like, I always feel like I'm going to the principal's office and they're spanking me. <laughs> for Miss B. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a bad joke. But uh, yeah. another thing I'd love to get your perspective on too. And I know, again, there are many processes, many modalities, many different uh, energy practitioners. But another thing, another part of this, because it, it, it is, there's so much, so much of this could be described as you've got two streams running. You got a foot in both worlds. So you have you have this information coming in, however it comes into the individual, and then you have the human part. Like, and, and when people talk about embodying, they talk about grounding, but there's got to be something developing, I would think, as there's a convergence of different uh, things brought down, downloaded, and so on, and they're put into motion. There's got to be some type of bridge being formed or, or you know, more general approach to marrying the two. Do you come across that? I mean, do you, I know you, you've got people coming in saying, hey, this is happening to me, but then that other part of, wow, my life's a mess kind of thing. Is there any way, any rhyme or reason that you've come up with or begun to come up with and how you marry the two, how you function in a more singular level, even though you have a foot in both worlds? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I find that, the more that the person interacts with their non-human family, if you like, and trust that guidance, the more they can bring into alignment what's going on in their physical world. Um, and so it's, it's because that's what, why we, we struggle so much, because when we're so much in our 3D without acknowledging this support and help and knowing and feeling and sensing that we have, that kind of guns. We actually then, it's like we're going around with one eye closed, you know, and we're looking at the kind of pinhole trying to make sense of everything. You can only make sense of it when you bring them together. So that for me, if something's happening, I don't understand. I'll say, all right, guys, what's this about? Why, why do I need to take notice of this? Why is this manifested? You know, mm -hmm. so I'm looking at the mirror. So what does this mean? What is it showing me about what I need to know? 
and that is why we you know whether you meditate or not and, and meditation doesn't have to be where you, you, you cut yourself off and everything nothing sometimes it's just about asking one question and just sitting in that space imagining you're talking to your best friend and, and allowing that first input to come in and give you some understanding it can be as simple as that it doesn't have yeah. to be complex because it isn't actually we make things hard on this planet everyone thinks they have to have 15 pieces of paper telling them they're good and they can do stuff before they actually believe it because that's what we're programmed into mm -hmm. this is innate this is innate in us the way think of it you know, whether you're not you think as your guys as your, your deceased grandmother that you loved and it might very well be your deceased grandmother that you love designs or granddad or whatever tune into that frequency of love that you're connecting to and say this is my question for today don't right. get too complex don't try and yeah. take on the whole world just one thing at a time and it will if you are opening up clairvoyantly or clear or it will be there in front of you almost before you ask because they know what you want to know so you know it's it's instant it's only when you start analyzing it, your yeah. logic comes in, you pull it apart, and then it doesn't make any sense. This is the other side of our source of information, but we've got to honor it and, and listen to it first. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be another part of this uh, transformation that's kind of uh, front and center is the reduction of logical thinking <laughs> and the reliance, more reliance on the intuitive thinking. Uh, and, and, and obviously, you know, we've got, you know, incarnation after incarnation of programming, thinking with the, the head and mm -hmm. not the heart. But uh, and there's a lot of different ways to put it. But but it's real. I mean, there's no question about it. This is getting to the point we've been talking about on the show where how it affects every aspect of our inner relations with human beings and the world and jobs and, you know, the, the, everything. It's like everything. uh is well at the human interaction level things are becoming very magnified uh and there you go with the the two energies you were talking about because obviously one way will be through fear or victimization or externalization and the other is more self-reliance self-responsibility and self-empowerment yeah wow uh one, oh, i was one of the things tom sorry yeah. no no go ahead one of the things i what I was going to say to people, when you have that sense, that feeling, or that knowing, that's information from your multidimensional world. Mm -hmm. So all of those, you, are you listening to them? <laughs> because it's not just the clairvoyance, seeing things with your third eye or physically or whatever. It's not just clairaudience. It's a sensing, it's a knowing, it's a feeling. All of those things are information listen to them because you're getting information from your multi-dimensional world through all of those um, senses as well it isn't as i say just clairvoyance or clairaudience but it's the sensing and knowing and feeling that's giving you information as well i, I know this is going to sound a little bit off but um have you had any interactions with uh, insectoid family insectoid beings um, not personally. Um, I have been aware of mantis being around, and mantis. lots of people um, are um, connected to the mantis. Some of them feel like um, that they are their ancestors. Like the eight-year-old explained to me that he's a mantis. When he get, dies, he's going back to be ancestors that are a mantis being. Um, and there's um, others that have um, said to me that when their parent died they saw them as mantises mm. um which is really quite interesting so my understanding of mantis is they're master geneticists of the cosmos um they're the ones that have all the genetic um expertise um and they're very ancient and very wise mm. um and that that's come over on many many different levels um so oh yes and they deal with timelines that's the other thing that they do. Okay. Yeah. Well, sometimes I get impressions on the show and that's what I was getting. It wasn't, it was more like a picture and I would say it was mantis. I, I just didn't, I've never really sat there and tried to differentiate, but uh, uh, like a group of 12 of them, 
I don't know something there's I don't know what it is I'm not that's not my forte but I just thought I would ask because I, I've learned to uh, bring the things up that are that I've seen when 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 something like this is happening you're going to Las Vegas right um I virtual reality I am okay virtual reality okay I didn't know if you you were actually going to be going there or not because I saw yeah. I thought I saw two different posters and I didn't know if they were two different conferences but when I saw Las Vegas I was like oh my god you know we might yeah, see I'm, each other yeah las vegas is the 5d one but i'm doing ozark i'm doing one on hybrids in june contact in the desert as well is another okay. one that i'm so they're all they're all now virtual okay 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 well we're gonna have one that's not virtual <laughs> in uh, sedona may 28 29 30th and 31st uh, our first Sology Fest. So I, I, I just, it was a part of me like, oh my God, if she's going to be in Vegas, maybe we can connect. But, uh, but you never know. And sooner or later, we'll all, we'll all be able to, to come together, you know, uh, through teleportation or by location or physical yep. or all of the above. Yeah, it's always such a pleasure talking to you. It's, it's very, it's very generous and gracious of you to, to be, you know, so open to share uh this information and yourself and uh, i just want to say on behalf of of the sology audience and morgan and me and everybody else that uh we really appreciate the fact that you are open to you know sitting down every few weeks and and just talking about what's going on because I, i'm a big believer that this is the most valuable intel we can have is to have a conversation like this and put everything we know on yeah. the table and you know yeah put our boots on and go do it again <laughs> So. Todd, it's it's always a pleasure talking with you because you, you know, I do feel very, um, I feel very free in in being able to share more of this information than I've really ever done, and this is where my heart is anyway. Is is mm. is looking at the soul journey. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you again. I'll see you later. Peace out. All blessings to you, Mary.